Uh, are doing very well in this ecological zone. Okay, and, and uh, oh, sorry, sorry, you can continue. Uh, in terms of feeding, uh, I talk about uh, forage base, and forage base is where I said you use 90% of your forage, and these forage are classified into two. You have the protein based feeds, and you have the energy feeds. So you balance the two, and then you have the right dry matter content, and then your animal will produce and it will look nice like the one we have here. Thank you so much. I, I think we'll come back to the, the feed side so that I understand this protein-based and this starch-based. And first of all, which are some of the features of a good cow? Maybe can I look at, the, at a cow and identify that this is a good cow that can give me a good sort of breeds in my farm? Yeah, uh, a, cow, a very a good dairy cow should have some... Uh, visual characteristic that a farmer should be able to see. 
And one of the characteristics is color. Color is key because uh, for a pure Frisian, you can able to see it has two colors. It has a black and white color. And the legs, the legs should have white socks. And then in terms of uh, milk production, you can check uh, uh, about the udder. The udder should be protruding in front and behind. And then the legs it should not be having an angle of at least 45 degrees. It should be not bow inward or bow outward. So this animal, those are the facial characteristics of a good dairy cow. Ah, awesome. And now a good cow definitely must stay in a good in a good pen or a good uh, habitat. Maybe would you enlighten our farmers because some live, some cows live in very dead. I don't know how I can term it. But now, can you tell us uh, the features of a good habitat for the cow? Maybe da and does it affect the production? Yeah, uh, housing is very key in dairy production because we, when you have a poor housing, definitely your output will be low. Uh, in terms of housing, there is key elements or key factors to consider when you are uh, having a good housing. One of them is floor. The kind of the floor that you are making for the, for, the, for, the, for, the, for the dairy cow. It should not be slippery because when it's slippery, when the cow dung there, definitely the cow will slide and can have a fracture or a rear limb fracture. Then on the bedding, you should provide dry bedding. You can see in Baraka that we've provided two ways of uh, beddings in the, in, the, in, the, in the dairy unit. We have the one that we have provided the, the mattresses, the dairy cow mattresses, and we have the one that we have only provided the dry soil, dry soft soil, for so just making the, the cow uh, sleep or lie comfortably. Uh, another thing is uh, ventilation. You must create a, a, a cow barn or a cow shed that has a good aeration, that air can get in and out, not a, a, a very confined uh, room where there is poor ventilation or poor lighting. So that's great to learn. Now, uh, I'm wondering, I can see these cows are very healthy. What is one of the secrets that you can give a farmer to ensure that all his cows are healthy all the time or maybe he has a very healthy flock? Uh, as I said, we have uh, this project called Kenya Island Project that we are advocating about pure forage-based feeds uh, or pure forage dairying. And we are giving it 90% uh, forage. And this forage is like uh, we have, like today we are feeding our uh, intercrop of oat and veg. And then we are mixing them with uh, boma rolls. Uh, we are making sure that uh, this cow at least get a maximum out of the forage. And then we can at least add two kgs of uh, concentrate per day per cow. Ah, thank you. I understand that this institution is a training institution and definitely you have various animal health experts, despite you and maybe there are others. Would you advise a farmer that it's good to do with an animal vet or without, maybe to, to contribute towards the, maybe ensuring that he manages the disease and pests of the, his cows? That is very key. A farmer working with a, a professional, not just a vet, a professional vet, who comes or who do visits to your farm every day or every week, once per week, just to check up on uh, how you are doing in terms of diseases, in terms of management, in terms of uh, uh, breeding, because those are the key issues that uh, uh, happen in the farm, in the dairy farm. So you must make sure that you are working with a, a, a qualified professional vet. And uh, from that point, you can able now to make uh, a, a living or an income out of your dairy farm. Wonderful, wonderful. Now, uh, I can see the foliage. Oh, sorry, I'm, I'm, okay. Now, which are, you, you mentioned about uh, protein-based, carbohydrate-based. Would you maybe term just by listing the, the foliage that a farmer should include, which maybe contain proteins and high carbohydrates and their importance? All right, uh, in the Baraka, we have categorized uh, this feeds into two. We have protein based and we have energy feeds. Uh, in energy feeds, we have oats, we have maize for silage, we have uh, napier, uh, we have sorghum. Those are the classes of uh, energy feeds that are doing very well. We have uh, other feeds, but we don't advocate uh, people of this same ecological zone to, to grow them or to plant them because they are not doing well because of this ecological zone. 
Uh, in protein-based feeds, we have um, Desmodium, we have uh, sweet potato vines, we have Lucerne. Those are the major uh, 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 protein-based feeds that are doing well. I left out uh, purple vetch. Purple vetch is also doing very well in terms of uh, harvest per, uh, cut per harvest per year. Uh, wonderful. Uh, how about Pak Chong? I think it has been well publicized. I don't know if maybe, even though maybe you've not done the analysis, have you maybe planted some and have you started feeding your cows? Yeah, we have heard of uh, Pak Chong as an institution. We don't have any information about the Pak Chong because our main uh, 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 partner in research is Karo, Karo Naivasha. They are the one who give us uh, uh, advices but we make decision as an institution, but they have not bring out about the Pak Chong. What they have is a Kakamega one, and that's what we are advocating. We have no analysis data that shows Pak Chong has a protein of about 18, as they are saying in the media there. So I cannot talk anything about Pak Chong. We have no that data uh, released by Caro. So we are waiting until Caro release the data that uh, the, the Napier can uh, have at least a crude protein of 18%, then uh, we can uh, deliver it and make a decision as an institution to plant Pak Chong. Now, quickly, I would like you to give the farmer an advice. Maybe they, they already have their cows, you have already advised them on the feeding. Maybe as a leak how would you advise my farmers concerning improving the quantity of milk, the quality of milk, and maybe another general advice, maybe as we lap up, and maybe you can also maybe add on anything else that maybe you have forgot. Yeah, repeat on that. Uh, maybe I was so fast. Maybe I was asking, would you how would you advise my farmers concerning increasing the quantity of milk and the quality of milk that they are producing, apart maybe from feeds, or maybe the feeds are enough for that? Yeah. Uh, in terms of uh, how you can able to increase your milk production, First of all, it's, uh, the initial step is uh, your management. And uh, in your management, routine management is where now you will be advised if you're going to get uh, high quality and high quantity of milk per day or per year. For Baraka Agriculture College, we have a target of uh, 3,000 uh, liters per year per cow. But what we are doing now currently is uh, 2,500. We are hoping so that if you use this system or forage-based system, we'll uh, have to meet, we'll meet the, our target of 3,000 uh, liters per cow per year. And uh, in terms of... Uh, imp Thank you for that advice. And now I've seen Daily Board advocating for not using plastic materials while milking. What would you say concerning the, the number of times that a farmer should milk Maybe how to maintain the health of the, the health of the cow and the udder, and maybe the storage of milk. Yeah, uh, the health of the animal in terms of uh, milking, we are advocating some farmers are doing three times milking in a day. As we are doing twice per day because of uh, the changes we have in the, the, the dairy uh, system, we have uh, tried now the forage-based system. We want to see if next year we can do even drives uh, three times per year. Because this was a holding year, uh, this year we are wanted to establish more forage. So as we can do pure zero grazing, and then we can able now to at least milk these cows three times per day. Uh, in terms of uh, health of the udder, we have um, experts, uh, and we don't use hard milking. We have... We are using uh, machine milking, so it's rare to see uh, an animal with uh, uh, mastitis or chronic mastitis. We have a technician who is an expert in uh, animal health, so we are able now to mitigate and uh, make sure that we are using good management in terms of uh, milking. So thank you, and I believe we've just gone through maybe all what we have covered is more of a highlight. And maybe some farmers would be interested to visit. Do you have maybe short courses or short programs for, for farmers maybe who would want to learn more about daily farming? Oh, yes. As Baraka Agriculture College, we have a long course. Uh, we want uh, students who have finished high school with uh, at least D plus and D minus to come and enroll in a farm dairy farm management. That course is ongoing. You can uh, even uh, come uh, intake is ongoing now. 
uh, parents can uh, bring their children and learn more about dairy. And see, we have just started in dairy. We need uh, to at least uh, be a hub of uh, giving information about dairy farming in Kenya. So we are advocating that uh, uh, parents to bring their children who has a D minus and D plus come and learn a long course or a course in dairy farm management. We have also short courses uh, for farmers. We have uh, dairy courses for farmers and all other courses in beekeeping, in organic farming, in piggery, in dairy management. AI, AI, artificial inseminations. We have all those courses that are offered in Baraka College. So if you come in, you can get all that package for you. So thank you so much, Bonamogo. And we believe to keep in touch. In case of further inquiries, we'll come back and we'll be able to learn. So thank you so much. So to our viewers, thank you for following us up to the very end. And we believe that you have learned something. We believe that you've got the quality of your time and your data bundles. For those who are following us from other countries, maybe you can always comment and help us learn some of the, the tips that you're using to make this daily farming a success in your country. Until next time, it's your host, Biki Mani. Thank you.